So I'm just here today, I'm going to change the front brake pads on my 80 series Land Cruiser. Now it's been a while since I've done it and what I did yesterday because I knew I was going to be doing this is I actually got water and I cleaned all up around in here, washed all this down, gave it all a good rinse because I didn't want to be working in dirt and mud and grit. So gave it all a bit of a rinse down. Now I've got these pads here, picked them up from my local parts guy Steve, um, he's a great guy. Now I'm using RDA Extreme brake pads. I have had the super cheap auto caliber brake pads in here. They worked, they worked okay. Um, I wasn't a great fan of them. They were very, very, as you can see, very dirty. I'm getting a lot of brake dust and stuff on the gear from those brake pads. I was on my rims just constantly. Um, so I'm gonna give these ones a try. They're supposed to be noise reducing, and for frequent or heavy braking and a long service life. So I'll see how they go. Um, they come here, you have your pads all wrapped up there, and they've also got a little bit of a bit of grease to, to grease pins and things if you if you need to use them. Uh, they do have a nice little sticker here so that you can put up in your car so you know when you need to change your brake pads again. So I've already removed the wheel because you don't, know how to, you don't need to know how to do that. I'm sure you all know how to do that. We're here at the brake pad. So first thing to check is do your pads actually need replacing? Now you can look in and you can see through the inspection window on the back side of the plate that my pads are down in there and they're getting a bit low. Some brake pads will have a rattle sound that squeals when they are low and need replacing. So they're getting a bit low, that's my disc. That's disc, that's disc rotor, that's brake pad, that's the back of the brake pad. So yeah, getting a bit low and time to replace them. Let's get into it. So just sit these off to the side for now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this little clip out here. Should be easy. Now, as you can see for safety, I do have my jack there and my st car stands and the car is chocked so that it can't go anywhere. Now, make sure you don't lose the parts as you're doing this. Now you can see here this part, this is the anti-rattle spring. So as it comes out, the pins come out, it will spring open. Make sure you don't lose it and make sure you keep it the, the correct way up when reinstalling. So these pins will just come out. Make sure you keep them safe. So before we start pulling the old brakes out, this is your brake fluid up here at the master cylinder. All we need to do is with a, a syringe or a ladle is remove about two thirds of that fluid from the top. Now, you can't reuse this fluid. This fluid goes in the bin away, dispose of it thoughtfully, not in a drink container. Now, now the reason that we remove this fluid is so when we push the brake calipers apart, fit the new pads in, we don't overflow the top tank. Let's see how we go with that much. Make sure you put the cap back on. You don't want dirt and rubbish getting in the fluid. Okay, what we need to do is separate these pads a little bit. I'm just gonna see if I can wobble one with the multi grids here. So you need to get these, these cylinders back. Now, you can use a screwdriver and just gently lever the pad back. Be very, very careful though if you're going to use a screwdriver to lever it. You don't want to damage your disc rotor because then you will be up for new disc rotors. Now 
Now, this cylinder is pushing back in, which is forcing the brake fluid back up into our top tank. Now, you've only got to get it loose enough, and then your pad will just slide out like that. Now, keep your shims, what, what was in there, they will need to go on the new one. So, as it comes out, if you haven't done it before, take notice of which direction it is. Holes on the outside, pads on the inside. Okay, so that you know how to put it back in. I'm gonna sit mine down on the ground, outways. And then this one. Should just come out like that, beautiful. Lays down outside. Now we need to push these pistons right back out. Now the safest way to do it is with a piece of wood. So you get a piece of wood in there and level it. I'll get that now. Okay, so uh, a stronger piece of wood is required. So the wood is what's recommended by Toyota. I'm gonna to give this one a shot here. Just gently squeeze and work that cylinder back out. Now, while you're doing this, you wanna look for any leaks around the rubbers, anywhere like that. That means that you have a leak in the system and a broken seal and you're gonna to need to replace possibly your caliper, but get it looked at or worked on some more. Just finding it a little bit awkward because the camera's in the way. So you need it to get far enough back that you're gonna fit your new pads in. So that's not quite there yet, so I need to keep going. Uh, looking at the way. And you can see this one here has the little alert thing. That will scrape on your disc rotor and make a high pitched noise that alerts you that your brake pads are getting low. Comes on some of the more expensive pads. It's a really good idea. So if you're doing this, be very careful not to pinch that rubber. If you're doing it with multi-grips, because you do not want to damage those rubber seals. I just checked up in the, the top tank to see how much fluid's in the tank. Before doing the second wheel, I'm gonna to have to take some more fluid out. Okay, so they will go in now. So I had this little packet of grease here. Now this is to put between the, the parts of the metal. So we'll just open that out. Do not put it on the brake face. Okay, actually this has a, a little rubber bit on the back there, so I won't put that on that. But the grease is to put on the pins and other things as you go. It helps eliminate brake squeak. Now, as you're putting it back together, you should have two shims. You should have a slotted shim, that goes on first, and then a flat shim that your pistons put on. Now you can put a little bit of grease between this if you want. It helps eliminate the, the squeak. So just put a little bit in there. Put that in there. Then a little bit of the grease goes on there and on there like that. Just where that piston rubs, that just helps eliminate any squeaking noises that might annoy you as you are driving. Now remember we do not want the grease on the front face. Then, 
should all I think we need to pull our pistons out just a touch more Should all just fit back in just like that. We'll do the same to our other pad. Now that's got a bit of a curve in it, so just take that out. A little bit of a jiggle, in it goes. So a little bit of grease on the pin, also aided in coming out next time. Now, I'll just take that out. You notice there's a little hole there. Make sure you line that up as you go through so you can put your retaining clip back in. You may just need to jiggle it as everything lines up. Grease for the other pin. Now make sure you push the anti-rattle clip in so that it has t the pressure tension on it. Retainer clip. Now, I didn't quite get that hole in the right place. I can turn it with the clip. Put your two ends of your wires in first. There and there. Then pop that in like that. So that's one side complete. I'm going to do the other side now. Once you've done both sides, you may need to check your reservoir tank, tank just to see if it's topped up and needs a little bit of a top up. It shouldn't because remember you're pushing brake fluid up into it. Then what you need to do, put the wheels back on of course, lower the vehicle to the ground, get in, start the engine and just pump the brakes a few times. That's going to push your brake fluid back down the lines onto your brakes. Now I like to run my brakes in and that's take it for a drive, get it up to about 20 kilometres an hour and just lightly press on the brakes to make sure that they are bedding in, seating properly. Things here are going to move a little bit as it's doing. 
Then I'm going to take the car from 20 kilometres an hour up to about 50 kilometres an hour. Do the same thing, just check everything's working. The last thing that you want to do is get back out on the road and put your foot on the brake after changing them and you've got no brakes. So then I'll, once I've done 50, I'll go up to 80 and I'll just do the same thing at 8. Just a gentle, not a slam on the brakes, just a nice gentle press on the brakes. Let everything settle in, make sure everything's working fine. Guys, once you've done that, get out there, have fun four-wheel driving.